So, um, I was dropping a water bottle from a certain height, and so the first height was 0.762 meters, and the second height was 0.3937 meters, um, put the meters here. And so basically, so potential energy is my little diagram right here. Uh, this is the water bottle, this is the table that I dropped it from. Um, so basically, uh, what it is, is that it's, you can think of it as stored energy, so like energy before it drops, it's because gravity's pulling on it, but I'm holding it down, so when I release it, all that potential energy is released, causing it to fall to the ground. And as it's falling, it's converting into kin kinetic energy, which I'll explain later. And so basically, for the first, um, equation... I plugged in the mass here from the equation, mass times gravitational acceleration and the height. And so here's the mass, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.479 kilograms, which I uh, converted from uh, fluid ounces. And I also did the acceleration of gravity. And then I did the height, which I accelerated, I mean, which I converted from inches to meters. And then also, and I got 3.58 one joule so that means there is 3.581 joules of energy that was stored or ready to be released as soon as i let go of it and that that amount of energy would slowly convert into kinetic energy uh, from the point of rest and then so from here i did the same thing same mass same acceleration of gravity except i used a new height which was 0.3937 meters and so i got a um, potential energy of 1.85 joules and so that means, as I said before, it's that uh, is the stored uh, energy that was uh, waiting to be released, and it was slowly convert into kinetic energy, which I'll follow up into. So for kinetic energy, uh, the way that I look uh, look at it, and like uh, the way that I found it on Google, is that basically anything that's moving has uh, kinetic energy because it needs energy to move. So uh, that's why it has a mass and a velocity. And so basically, uh, to find the kinetic energy, you need the mass and the velocity squared. Um, so I plugged in all these numbers, which is the mass and the velocity. I found it by using huddle technique and then just simply initial time minus final time over uh, seconds. Or, or yeah, seconds is the time. And then I got 0.643 for 0 .6, 0 0.762 meters. Okay. And for the next equation, I did the same thing, except I plugged in a different time and a different height squared, which would give me velocity squared. I got 0 0.321. And uh, this kinetic energy makes sense because this this height is almost, uh, or this one is almost double this one. And this one is basically, this one is double this one. So it kind of adds up. Then for the free body diagram, uh, this is the water bottle and this is the normal forces and the force of gravity since it's bringing it down. And just to make sure to be safe, I found the force of gravity acting upon the water bottle. So for me, uh, potential energy for or elastic potential energy means that so as a rubber band is just uh, sitting there in its normal shape, it has uh, zero potential energy. But as soon as I put the weights on it and it expands it and it deforms it, then it has potential energy because the potential energy wants to return it to its um, normal shape. And uh, while it's just sitting there, it has a lot of stored energy, which is also potential energy. And so that when the rubber band snaps back to its normal shape, it all converts to kinetic. And as soon as it goes back to rest, it's potential energy. So then in order to find the potential energy, I had to find the spring constant. And so I weighed the little tiny fishing weights. And um, approximately this was the weight, 0 0.029 kilograms. And then uh, I also, or no, I used the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second squared, 0 divided by 0 0.013 meters as using this equation which is change in length i got 21.862 joules as a spring constant for the potential energy i got one half or the equation is one half spring constant times 
displacement x squared. Displacement is simply the difference between the normal state and the deformed state. And so then I plugged in all my numbers and the elastic potential energy that I had when it was sagging or deformed was 0 0.142 joules. For the relationship between potential energy and kinetic energy for the elastic and the drop. So I noticed that for the, um, the drop, uh, it was around the same range of uh, numbers. So it was like low uh, hundreds. And so as you can see here, it was 0.397 and here it was 0.297. This was for the gravitational. And then for the elastic, it was 0 0.142, which is not that far off from the, um, from the gravitational. So it's kind of like the kinetic energy and the potential energy switched places. And I, I guess my explanation for that would be like um, the kinetic energy is the rubber band like pulling. So the it's potential energy converting into kinetic energy. And then while the rubber band is at the bottom, while it's stretched by all the weight, it's going to turn it back into kinetic energy. So I guess that would make sense why this would be. And also like um, the conservation of energy, like... Uh, or mechanical energy so whatever energy is there is always going to be there and it's either going to convert back to potential or kinetic and if Ocean approved. Dale's excited. Dale, you want to come? Dale, you can hang out with us. Uh, so work is basically the product of force and displacement. So like, the way that I think of it is like, uh, kind of like the amount of force that you need in order to like be able to pull it uh, the direction. And so for my first example, as you saw in the first example that I showed in the video, um, using huddle technique, I found that the angle was 23 degrees. And uh, the distance that it covered once I trans or once I converted it into meters was 0 0.178 meters, and I found the time uh, to find the velocity, and then so I, I try to find um, acceleration. So I, the initial was obviously zero, and so uh, I just divided the first velocity by two to get the acceleration. So you see here. So to find work, you need the um, the displacement, the force and the uh, cosine of the theta or the angle. And so to find force, I did the, um, the mass times acceleration, which is uh, Newton's second law. And uh, so this is the displacement, and then this is the cosine. And so when I multiply them all together, I got this for joules. And then um, I also, uh, let me see here. And then, so for the second example, the theta was 57 degrees, and this was displacement once I converted it back into meters, which is 0 0.29 meters, and this is the amount of time it took. And I did the same thing to find the acceleration, and so I got 0 0.0247 meters per second squared. And then same equation, so you need to find force, and then displacement, and the cosine of theta, or the angle. And so I found the displacement, and then I found the force using the mass times acceleration, Newton's second law, and then I found the theta, or the angle using, um, why well, I estimated using a huddle technique, and then this is what I got for work. So for the free body diagram, uh, I use a second example, and so this is the force of gravity acting upon the weight, and this is normal forces, so like, you know, it's just normal forces, and force of friction, obviously caused by my, my table, and so this, this side is um, the force applied side, so this would be a uh, force as well. And then this is where, uh, from when I was pulling it with the fishing line, and this was the angle that I was pushing it or um, pulling it at. And so this uh, also ties in with the equation from work. So that's why you find the cosine because you would you would think of it like if you so you have the force right here because you have the mass and the acceleration. So if you're doing trigonometry, then you would end up using cosine. So you'd end up just using this angle to find this side.
So basically, power for me, or the way that I think of it, is a uh, is uh, how fast someone is creating energy or transferring energy. That's why like the I guess you would say the units are in watts, cause like joules per second, uh, if you were to say. And so basically, to, to use an example like uh, for the project, I used the first example that I used for my work a portion of the project so this is how I found work you know uh, displacement force and the cosine theta so this is what I got for my work um, yeah and so the power equation is uh, work divided by the change in time and so I went back to huddle technique and uh, I found the time over oh, this this should be 3.6 sorry about that so this should be oh so it is 3.6 now and so then uh, power equals 0 0.0002314 joules over 3.6 seconds. And so for the power, I got 0 0.00006428 watts. So I guess you would say that is the rate in which ener energy is transferring from like the fishing, fishing line into the weight so that it is being pulled, uh, if that makes sense. But anyways, that's all for my project. And thanks, Mr. Flanagan, for allowing like this opportunity to raise our grades.